expenditures. So I started with doom and gloom that Mrs. Smith is going to have to spend $98,000 immediately on her own care. And I had her ba uh, paying for a funeral, buying a new car, which will pass to the heirs, and then funding this Medicaid annuity. Now, I've talked about asset qualification rules. So there, if you have too many assets, you're not going to qualify for Medicaid. There are also income qualifications, meaning that if you make too much income, you know, it logically makes sense. The government's not going to pay for your care. So if you're single, the income limit is right around $2,000, $2,022. This is from all income sources, monthly income. So if your income is over $2,000, you're basically not going to qualify for aid. Now, where does it come from? Your wages, <laughs> as much as this will pain you, your Social Security benefits, your pension, uh, interest payments, dividends, IRA distributions, all of these that make up your income can disqualify you for aid. Now, there's a couple different types of uh, states out there that, that deal with this differently. So some of the states, approximately 50% of the states are there what we call income cap states, and uh, some of them are called spend down states. So, so let me see here. If we have, uh, if you're in a 50% state, any amount, any amount over $22,022 will disqualify you for aid. So if you happen to make you know, uh, $2,023 in, in any given month. If you happen to make that, let's say you had some dividend stock that normally didn't pay a lot and you had a really good month. In one particular month, it could jump you over that limit. You would immediately be disqualified for aid, which is going to cause you a whole lot of problems. So um, we need to do proper planning. There are ways to shift your income. Well, I normally make an income of $3,000. Okay, well, there's a way actually to shift that income sometimes to a Medicaid trust, which I'm not going to get into. You can actually assign the income to a Medicaid trust, and it will get you below that $2,000 threshold. So again, with proper planning, you can get around this. But again, if you have too much in income, you're not going to get aid. Now, in the spend down states, it's a little bit uh, simpler. So let me go through an example. Basically, um, your, if your income is more than the cost of care, you're not going to get aid. I mean, that makes sense. You make more that it costs to be in the nursing and want you to just pay for it yourself. That's basically what a spend down state is. But it doesn't have this hard and fast rule where if you're a dollar over that limit of $22,022, you're automatically disqualified. Basically, if your income is less than what it costs for care, you'll qualify, except for where's all of your income gonna go? It's all gonna go to the nursing home. So my example is Mrs. Smith has an income of $3,000, which is over the $2,000 threshold, right? But the cost of care is six. So she's not making more than the cost of care, the government says, as long as you give that $3,000 income all to the nursing home, we will still qualify you for the aid, and we will pay the remainder. You follow? So spend down states are a little bit more favorable. Now let's look at a married couple example. So we got a married uh, couple. The income follows the person going to the nursing home. Hmm, that's a problem. So Mr. and Mrs. Smith are married. Mrs. Smith has a total income of $2,400 per month. Mr. Smith. Mrs. Smith is currently in a nursing home and her income that she receives from Social Security is only $800 per month. Mr. Smith is not required to use his money to pay for her care and because her income is less than that $2,022 number, Mrs. Smith is going to qualify for aid even though the husband makes more than the $2,000 number. So he makes $2,400. It is not allocated to her. It's separate and she can in fact qualify for aid, which is good. Now again, watch out for the too much income. You won't qualify with good planning, we can do it. There's something called the Monthly Minimum Maintenance Needs Allowance, and that's a mouthful, M-M-M-N-A. So again, we can shift assets, or we, I'm sorry, we can shift income from one spouse to the other. I'm not gonna get into it in any great detail in this presentation, but you should know, even if the nursing home bound spouse, while going in, you know, may have uh, income that's over the limit, we can reallocate that maybe and assign it to the, uh, the, to the non-nursing home bound spouse and still get that one uh, the nursing home bound spouse qualified for aid. When to apply for benefits? Wow, this is really important. Uh, obviously, we want to apply as soon as possible when we know we can qualify. I mean, that's obvious, right? The, if you apply a month late, what happens? Well, there's a month that you had to pay for your own care that you could have got paid for by Medicaid. So that's really the downside of applying too late. You're going to pay more money out of your pocket. But applying too early can be an absolute disaster. This is what happens when you go to a, an attorney, a CPA, a financial planner to get advice on Medicaid planning when they don't know the subject matter. What are they going to say? They're going to see that you have a need for long-term care, uh, a need for Medicaid assistance. What are they going to say? Well, you need long-term care assistance. Just file for Medicaid. File now. File so you can get your benefits starting quicker, right? This can be an absolute disaster. Why? Because remember, the, the examiner is going to go back 60 months, five years to look at all of your assets and the gifts that you made. So it could cause you a penalty. 
And while the look back period to see your gifts is only five years, the penalty period is not limited by five years. And so if you gave away something over the last five years that was significant in value, it literally could cause you a penalty period of 10 years. And so applying too early can be a disaster. You've got to have your ducks in a row. You've got to make sure that your gifts were done properly and that your assets are allocated properly before applying for Medicaid. Oh, so let's go through an example. So I've got Mrs. Smith gifts to her children $400,000 on February 1 of 2006. If she waits until February 1 of 2011 and applies, there will be no disqualification period. So if I gave away $400,000 on February 1, 2006, and I waited five years to uh, apply, I'm good. However, if she applies in January of 2011 instead of February, guess what? It's only one month. You're like, ah, it's no big deal. Maybe they'll knock off one month of aid for me. Wrong. They're going to zap Mrs. Smith with an 80-month penalty because she applied for aid literally only 30 days early. Again, this is what can happen when you're working with an advisor who doesn't understand the subject matter and says, hey, quick, go qualify for aid. Go, go put in your application. It can be devastating financially to you and to your heirs because that'll be money that, they, that they're not really able to, uh, well, it depends. Look, if Mrs. Smith gave away $400,000, hopefully her family would say, I know you screwed up your application. We're going to use that $400,000 to help you pay for care. But there's no guarantee once the gift has been made, that's going to be up to your children or, or heirs to do that for you. So items not covered. This is a very cursory presentation. I've not covered how to uh, posture your assets so the government doesn't seize them after your death. Because guess what's going to happen after you die, after you've received aid from Medicaid? They're going to look at all of your assets and say, well, we gave you all of this money. Now we'd like it back. And they'll see what kind of assets you have, your personal residence, other things that you have upon your death that they'll say, maybe we can get our hands on that and maybe we can recoup some of our money so be careful there are things you can do to posture yourself before you die to make sure that none of your assets after death will get seized again protecting the home is a real headache uh, there are books written just on how to protect your home from Medicaid planning the proper use of Medicaid trusts are not covered in this presentation the proper use of promissory notes there's something called half a loaf planning reverse half a loaf plan I'm just sort of throwing out terms to you um, you can look them up on the internet but uh, these are things that I don't have time to cover in this cursory presentation Really, Medicaid planning is a quite complex topic. Again, very few attorneys know anything about this, even though they should, especially the estate planning attorneys. This pr presentation was basically created not to make you an expert on Medicaid planning or to have you take it and go uh, give yourself advice from the presentation. I'm here to motivate you to learn more about it. I'm here to motivate you to find somebody who can help you because without proper planning, it can be devastating to you uh, financially. Now, one of the slides I have in almost all of my presentations is the slide that says, why aren't your current advisors familiar with Medicaid plan? And then you see a picture in my book, it says bad advisors. How to identify them and how to avoid them. Unfortunately, very few places in the industry teach Medicaid planning. My educational institute is one of the only places in the industry you can go, in the industry meaning accounting, legal, financial, uh, insurance agents can go to learn the subject matter. Attorneys aren't taught this in law school, neither are CPAs, insurance agents, or financial planners can barely spell Medicaid planning. So the chances of you finding somebody in your local area who can, knows this subject matter is going to be difficult. Uh, but in summary, uh, the number one rule about Medicaid planning is what? Do not wait, do not wait, do not wait to plan. I don't mean do not wait to run to file your Medicaid application. Do not wait to plan. The longer you wait, the more money you're going to cost yourself and the more money you're going to cost your heirs. Look, whether you're five years away or ten years away from going into a nursing home, or even if you're basically on the way to a nursing home, there are things that you can do. I strongly recommend you seek out a certified, medical, uh, certified Medicaid planner that you can work with. If you don't know of anybody in your local area that you can work with, please feel free to contact me uh, for recommendation. I'd be happy to make one. So good luck in your endeavors to save your money for Medicaid spend down. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.